Welcome, it's another exciting episode of We the Doctors. My name is Dr. Jules. Today we are talking about a topic that is becoming a growing concern in Nigeria. It's found all over the world, but in Nigeria it's becoming a concern. And part of the problem is it is so expensive to manage. I'm talking about kidney failure. I have in the studio with me my colleagues, Dr. Valeria, Dr. Yvonne, Hi guys. and Dr. Okay to talk about this. It is a growing concern. And for you to lose the function of your kidneys, of course, we will explain that. But before that, let us talk about the predisposing factors, yeah. the epidemiology. It is quite common. Now, when I was talking to the um, kidney specialist from Kidney Solution, Dr. Um, Ogo, Ebuna. He told us that 2 to 3% of the population, and in um, Nigeria we have about 170 million people. Yeah. So you can imagine 2 to 3% of people battling with kidney uh, yeah. problems right now. That's over 3.5 million people. That's yeah. a lot That's of people. So we cannot afford to ignore this. So yeah. what we do best is make you, help you understand it and create awareness of medical conditions. So now let's talk about those um, risk factors that I mentioned yeah. earlier. Who wants to go first? Um, I think I'll start. Okay. Not one of the things people want to hit first, but mm -hmm. let me start with it. There's what we call analgesic nephropathy. Okay. Big <laughs> word for when you abuse NSAIDs. You know those drugs pain go killers. to the chemist. Painkillers. Pain yeah. When uh -huh. you abuse painkillers, those drugs go to the chemist and say, I'm but having pain type. here, I'm having mm. this here. I want to have this drug. We call all sorts of names and they give you, sometimes they mix lots of them. Combination. And then the problem Combine. is these things go ahead and kill your kidney. Mm -hmm. When you abuse some drugs, it's not just that, even yeah. antibiotics. So, many yeah, so you have like the yeah. likes of gentamicin, yeah. for example, yeah. and there are some drugs that are nephrotoxic. So what I was just saying in excess is that there are some drugs that you should not take because they can damage your kidneys. Or you take the prescription. Without, 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 taking, without, taking it, without, you know, I mean, abusing the drug, using the drug indiscriminately, like she said. True. And then even some herbal concussions. Yeah. True. Most of these drugs you see around, you just see this drug, they tell you this drug used to do this one. Mm -hmm. This one used to do this one. Manpower, eh, energy. <laughs> this one, you don't pack everything that you drink. At the end of the day, you're damaging your kidney. Yeah. Yeah. Without knowing. Yeah, you know, so true. you need to be very, very careful. Is everything they give to you that you drink? You yeah. drink. And exactly. secondly, we like to talk about hypertension. Mm -hmm. Very That's the leading cause. Leading cause the secondly, yes, the most leading cause of this kidney, kidney issues thing. people have. People t tend to take this hypertension and we think for granted because you know it's a silent killer. Mm -hmm. It actually doesn't even present till it has done its damage. Exactly, done its damage. Exactly. Yeah, the, done, done is. Is yeah. the process actually happens by people will be thinking that hypertension, kidney, what is the relationship between both of them? Mm -hmm. The kidneys are supplied by blood vessels. True. So over time, because of the effect of this hypertension, these blood vessels tend to stiffen mm -hmm. as a result of what I would want to call right functions now. Of the kidney, so, exactly. So it can't pressure. now start sure. performing the function that it is normally supposed to perform. Absolutely. Of um, filtering Absolutely. and doing Absolutely. other things. Yeah. So that's it's a leading cause. Talking about hypertension, you yeah. also have diabetes as well because exactly. diabetes itself, called, we can also have a form of the property. It can damage the kidneys mm -hmm. exactly. if you're diabetic. So that's why it's important, like she mentioned earlier on, these are silent killing diseases. Mm -hmm. So you need to do a routine check once in a while. If you realize that your blood pressure is high, your, your sugar level yeah. is high, it is not a death sentence. No, All exactly. we are just saying is that follow Manage the your advice of your, your, your doctor, take your medications as a when you. And if you do this, you can be hypertensive for 30, 40, 50 years exactly. with nothing hundred. happening to yeah. you. Like, can I you point get in, just add in um, obesity? Yeah. yeah. Obesity is another factor. They are not saying if you're obese, you'd uh, obesity have is a fact. It's a risk factor fact, for everything. It's a risk factor for everything. A lot of bad. It's exactly. You know, but nonetheless, we understand that. Look, some people cannot help the things and all of that, but we exactly. just encourage our people try and exercise. Exactly. Avoid late meals and all of that. No, but is, with the research, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Doctor Okay. With the research that has been done, it has been found that people that are over there, if you've been watching our show, mm -hmm. we talked about body mass index. Yes. Yeah, if you want to yeah. go online and watch that episode, exactly. your weight and, and you, you yeah. at with doctors. Okay. You want to understand what your body mass index is because the research has shown that people with a higher body mass in mm -hmm. index are prone to having uh, yeah. um, kidney we've been, failure. We've been listing things that are happening in people's bodies that can yeah. cause this trouble. Mm -hmm. um, I think I want to mention something that statistically, mm -hmm. um, you find out that people between ages 30 and 50 are more prone to having kidney failure. Mm -hmm. um, it's difficult to pinpoint and say this is the reason. Yeah, exactly. But you know, over time, your kidney has been working, it's been yeah, damaged wow. over and over. Now, these effects begin to show mm -hmm. from 30 to 50. 
It's just a statistical finding, but it's important to mention that this is the point where it's important you check your kidneys often in the hospital. But, but then again, you could also attribute that to the fact that as we age, our kidney functions, you know, you know, kidney gradually decreases in functions exactly. and all that. And then again, this age you are talking about is also the age where chairmen drink anything. <laughs> eh? <laughs> From alcohol to, to liquor to spirits. <laughs> so scholarship. Eh? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. smoking and all of that. And then that's where people drink. Well. And then drink. Doing that, invariably, you are damaging yeah, your kidney giving and the all kidney of that. So much work you know, there was, I give you a joke. I was coming out of my house one day and then... Um, I was having a little chat with one of my neighbors, and he was telling me about how he had lost one of his friends who passed on, you know, that um, the guy had kidney failure and then died and all that kind of thing. It was wow. quite saddening and all of that. And I was saying, ah, doctor, that's in that serious matter. I just lose. While he was talking to me, he was smoking, I was drinking, <laughs> oh drinking high spirits. And then, them, and they you that, are, I said, that kidney failure is in your kidney friend. This is how it started. <laughs> so, I said, I hope you don't want to go in that way. He said, doctor, they, they want to go keep us in. <laughs> and then again, you know if you know yeah. those things, they have to educate him and all of that. And then exactly. he decided to give his life to... To the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then change his way and all that. Let's hope that uh, that would help, you know, yes. basically. So you yeah. need to be very careful. True. Yeah. Yes. A healthier you is always the best very, version of yourself. That's true. Exactly. exactly. So you want to stick around because we'll be talking to a specialist, giving you, um, even sharing a testimonial with you. A patient that is on dialysis will share his story with us. But before that, when we come back, Dr. Yvonne will be describing the functions of the kidney and be showing you how the dialysis machine works. We the doctors comes back shortly. Hi, and you're welcome back. It's We the Doctors. I'm Dr. Yvonne, and today we've been talking about kidney failure. In this segment, we'll be talking about the functions of the kidney and something really different from what we usually do. As you can see, we're in a very different environment. So starting with the functions of the kidney, the first one I'll be mentioning today is it's responsible for filtering toxins or waste products out of the blood. Most people think that this is just what the kidney does, production of urine. It, way, it goes way more than that. The kidney is also responsible for the production of red blood cells in the sense that it produces erythropoietin that stimulates your bone marrow to produce the red blood cells. It's also responsible for the maintenance of the electrolyte balance in the blood. Then lastly, I will mention the fact that the kidney also has a role in regulating blood pressure in the body. So you can see it goes way beyond what you think of normally. Well, symptoms of kidney failure begin to show up when the kidney gradually loses its functions. When these functions start wearing off, there are some medical interventions that can actually help. But when the kidneys fail completely, and I forgot to mention the fact that it's not just kidney kidney. There are two kidneys as well, known the two kidneys in the body. If one kidney fails, the other one can actually suffice. Well, if both of them feel completely, meaning that there's a buildup of waste in the body, then the body is not able to function the way it should normally. And that brings us to why we are here today talking about dialysis. With me today is Dr. Ogo Ebuna. He's here today with me and he's going to be talking about dialysis. As you can see, there is this machine here, the dialysis machine. So he's going to be explaining to us and telling us what the machine and how it's functioning. Yes, thanks for the one for the introduction. And uh, <clears throat> before I go on to describe what this machine does, I think it's important for us to outline that the different stages of kidney disease. And like Dr. Yvonne mentioned, if you lose as much as 80% of your total kidney function from both kidneys, you are in failure and you most likely will need some sort of replacement uh, treatment for your kidneys. There are two ways that can be done, either by dialysis or by transplantation. For dialysis, there are two types of dialysis. There's the belly dialysis, which unfortunately we won't be talking about today, and then there's what we call hemodialysis, or the blood dialysis, and that's what we're talking about today. And this is an example of a machine that is used to perform such treatment usually lasts about three to four hours. It's a very highly monitored uh, procedure. And what happens is that a filter just like this is used, this is the artificial kidney. And it's hooked up to tubes <coughs> and the blood comes out from the patient, goes through the tubes, goes in through one end of the filter and comes out through the other end of the filter. There are a lot of gadgets here on the inside of the machine that monitors uh, the blood pressure of the patient 
and also how effectively we're able to remove the toxins and the fluid. Okay. All right. So I think that really just summarizes what the dialysis machine does. Um, you know, being on a dialysis machine is not necessarily a death sentence. You know, as long as you, you go to a place where they know what to do and the nurses are careful, the doctors are careful, people can live tens of years. I have patients that have lived 18, 20 years on dialysis. So uh, it, it is certainly a treatment that nobody wants, but when it happens, if it's done well, you can live life to the fullest. Okay, I'm sure people will be concerned. I'm sure they want to know how many times a week people actually come for dialysis or people in failure. How many times a week? Is it every day? Is it? That, that's a very good question. So, um, God has made us in a very marvelous way. You know, the kidneys work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no vacation, no holidays, no breaks. But when you have kidney disease and kidney failure that requires dialysis or transplant, <coughs> What the studies have stud, the studies have shown that three times a week okay. is the best, all right? So in some in some countries they even offer more than that, but the balance between cost and effectiveness makes it that three times, if you do dialysis three times a week, that should be sufficient. Yeah, okay. That should be sufficient to take you many years. Okay. All right. So people on dialysis that come three times a week, they do this without taking any medication or. Is there something you give them alongside dialysis? I think that's a very important point because some people think that once they get on the machine that there's nothing else that is needed. And I think it's important to point out that, so for example, Dr. Yvonne, you had mentioned that um, the kidney produces a signal to the bone marrow yeah. to produce blood. This, the machine itself doesn't produce that signal, yeah. but there are drugs that we give to the patient yeah. to help provide that signal to the bone marrow okay. so that the patient has more energy. Mm -hmm. right? and some of the building blocks for blood is iron. So we give iron, we give this medication called erythropoietin, and that helps the patient. There may also be other medications like hypertension related medications, but your blood pressure might still be high. And like you said, the kidney does help regulate blood pressure. So you might still need to you know, take blood pressure medication. Okay. At the end of the day, some people have been wondering, do people ever stop dialysis or a lifelong thing? That's a very good question too. And it all depends on how sudden and how severe your kidney failure is. Okay. If it's and not too severe, you will just need a few treatments okay. and you recover. Okay. But if it's very, it's, if the damage to your kidneys has been happening over many years okay. and it's very severe, it may not be reversible. Okay. And that's when you need to be on dialysis okay. lifelong. And or get a transplant. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Ibina. It's been an interesting segment. We learned so much about dialysis. But please do not go anywhere. Just stay tuned because we'll be right back. I'm going to the street right now to ask big questions about kidney failure. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. I've been having treatment since uh, May last year. It was when I went to St. Nicholas Hospital. There yeah, they told me I have kidney problem. And I am on stage five. Because there's five types of kidney problems. Stage one, stage two, stage three. This can be curable if you are on stage two, two or three. But when you reach stage four or five, that means your kidney are packed. Then Then, if your kidney are packed, the next thing you have to do is to do dialysis. Because if you don't do dialysis, there's a lot of toxin which will enter your blood. And then you will not be able to remove, which is you will have high uh, uh, uric acid. And when you have it, you can it can enter your brain and there you can go to coma. So the one helping me, the dialysis one helping me. But I didn't be I'm seeing young because now I am over 70. I'm not interested in doing a transplant. 
because of my age. So with dialysis, I can continue to manage my life. But the problem there is that uh, the financial body or needs that because every week you have to do the dialysis three times in a week, which is the normal since last year. So before when that thing started, I was most of I was formerly in St. Nicholas. From St. Nicholas, I went to London, Upper Cromwell. There I spent about six months. So when the financial body uh, started, then I come back to Nigeria with the hope if the price can uh, be different. But still yet not. In Nigeria I will spend roughly around three hundred thousand naira in a month for the dialysis before I have to do it three times. Otherwise if I don't do it all my leg will become swollen and there's the same chunk of water in the body. Then, then, then uh, every time I do dialysis, they will remove some pint of water from my body. Then I will get better. Then there will be other other days. Like if I do it on Monday, I will not do it on Tuesday or Wednesday. I will do it again. Then after Wednesday, I will do it on Friday. So. It's three times in the year. Three times in the year. Yes. Uh, the different, the different that is there is that uh, in the abroad, you uh, cannot compare it with the, the, the one in Nigeria because they take care. Here also they take care, but you cannot compare. The system here will be one in abroad. So the, the government is helping them in abroad. So I didn't be I was if I didn't be I was a stiff person, I will be doing it free. But being that I'm an island, so I was paying about four hundred pounds per dialysis, maybe three times in a week. Yeah, over there, they are doing it free for their citizens. But being that I'm not the citizen, so when I came to Nigeria, I thought I would get it free. But I went to all the hospitals, they are charging me, there was nothing like that before I came to this place to begin with. Uh, the message I will give is that uh, the kidney cannot really kill you per se. If you manage yourself, then you be careful of what you are eating. You stop eating salt. You don't take too much oil. And then you don't take a lot of water. So you can stay for a long time. If you, if you manage yourself with all those things, you don't take orange. Because orange contains, as the doctor said, yes. Then you have to take something like blackberry. Blood, blackberry or, or plum. So you cannot just be, you can, there is a lot of things you should not eat when you are under dialysis. And also banana, you cannot eat banana. Potassium, thank you. Uh, my own, when, after, when they interviewed my own, it was my blood pressure causing. Yeah, some people, maybe they have, they are diabetic and they also have blood pressure. But I'm having only blood pressure. So that's what caused the. Uh, but I don't really know what really caused the kidney failure. But when they diagnosed me in St. Nicholas, they said I am at stage 5. With me, all my kidney are no more working. Yes. 
But uh, I, will, I will suggest that if government come to the aid of some people who want to do the same, they can still have a good life. Something really a disease can make you, but it's costing money. But many people do not have financial power to do it. And that's why many people are dying. I will appeal to the government if they can establish more dialysis center or allow more individuals to do dialysis center so that it can be cheaper and it can help. Yes, even I've met some patients here who was unable to pay his dialysis. I helped him pay it for five times. He is uh, about 31,000 times five. Yes, and when you are doing dialysis, you have to be having special injection, which is called EPO. So that because when you have kidney, kidney cannot produce blood for you again. So that the EPO will be boosting your blood. That's how you can manage your life for, for some time. Hi guys and you're welcome back to With The Doctors. If you are just joining us, we have been talking about kidney failure. And it's been interesting, but this segment we're going to be giving you tips on how to care, you know, for your kidneys pretty much. And um, to avoid a situation whereby you have kidney failure. Dr. Yvonne, you want to start first? Well, we'll be talking about the things you should do. Talking about diet, and it's very important. Very, very important. Our meals in this part of the world actually have too much Arms. spices. Spice. Talking about salt, sodium. So you want to start using, like, maybe sodium-free seasoning. You want to use less of um, fried food, oils, and the rest of them. Maybe you make stir-fries. Stir when you open a tin, to take as in tin food, you want to rinse it properly before ingesting because all these things, as in high sodium intake, is you, a problem. You are, and seasoning, yeah, did you mention yeah. seasoning? She's just, yes, she's, I did. Just, she's just talking about the kitchen as if the kitchen is a hospital environment. <laughs> no. Just saying seasoning this, seasoning that. But right. that's really important. Yeah. Um, it is. Lots of sodium can actually increase your chances for hypertension, yes. mm -hmm. and that goes ahead to. But to talking kidney, about even diet generally, even in the situation where you already have your kidneys being borderline, you're already having a situation of kidney damage, you might want to be careful about eating high potassium as well. Exactly. All right? So the likes of banana, yogurt, and spinach and all of that, you may want to be careful with that. And then when you have kidney damage, there's a possibility of having high phosphorus. All right? And that tends to leach on on the on calcium in the body. And then you might have someone having osteoporosis that like a bad, you know, damage to the bones and all of that. Sure. So that Dr. way you also need to reduce, you know, food. So Dr. you need to Valeria, be, Dr. see Valeria. a dietitian, basically. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the like that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to educate you on those food yeah. you need to eat. No, the thing we're talking about now is that for people that don't even Generally, have any kidney issues, they should be careful prevent of them, yes. it. Exactly. But how do we avoid this thing? You know one thing see. I was talking about recently with someone is the fact that sometimes we eat out a lot. Sure. And you see this mama food put food. <laughs> it's always the <laughs> They put all the Seasons. spice and the seasoning inside the food. It. And then you sit down, you eat the food, you're always enjoying it. So how do you control that it one? Control your kitchen. Your will. It's all That's about it. your will. Mm -hmm. You cannot control your extrinsic factors, but you can control your decision. You how is it my will when I'm not in my house <laughs> at that point in time? <laughs> maybe maybe, 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 maybe what's important now is that if you're a mama put person, mm -hmm. um, I think it's time for you to understand that yes. you're actually a part of people, making people healthy or sicker. I think we need to talk to Nabda so, to be going to monitor this mama put up and let them be making sure that it's sitting and whatever they are putting, they're not killing us. They should be. Yeah, <laughs> because exactly. it, if they don't make these things sweet, but you know you will not buy. Yeah. So, no, but you not, you make it sweet doesn't mean you should kill us now. Uh, oh, it's it's on, on diet, I think I want to switch it. Yeah. Um, smoking has never been a part of diet. True. You know, um, growing up in school, they ask you, you talk about carbohydrates, talk about fats. I've never seen cigarettes on that list. It's a habit. So, smoking is going to kill your kidneys. I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah. Um, enough of, pl enough of plain nice with it. Yeah. Smokers will die young. The truth is that from the first tick, you're already damaging your kidneys. True. And then you have to cut down on alcohol. Exactly. It's important. There's Very a important. limit of alcohol that's acceptable. Uh, maybe you can go on our Twitter page, at with the doctors, scroll down, you see where we've discussed it, and you just look at it. But really, right. really cut down on alcohol. It's exactly. Do you know some countries, they actually make the pack of the uh, cigarettes in the shape of a coffin, and they still buy 
by it. So I don't know. It, it, it's just the That's will. That's amazing. Exactly. Then, of course, exercise, exercise, exercise. We yeah. cannot even emphasize it enough. It protects against most things. Yeah. So you want to. It also helps prevent you from being in the uh, the bracket of being obese. Yeah. So if you exercise, even if it's 30 minutes, three times a week, yeah. you know. And, of course, you want to have enablers, friends that would enable you towards yeah, the exercise. right direction, exactly. becoming, yeah. you know, healthier. And, of course, with that, you will reduce your chances. Yeah, but one of the most important things you also need to do is that you need to make it a habit to do what they call the yearly or routine health check. Ah, yeah. True. A lot of people don't go to the hospital to go and check on their kidneys and see what your body system is like. Exactly. That particular. They don't wait till when it gets to a stage where the kidneys are fully damaged and you require dialysis mm -hmm. before yes. you start running health and skelter. Check your blood pressure. Right. You don't even know what your blood pressure is like. Check your sugar level. That way you can make healthier life choices. Exactly. Right. You know that, look, my blood pressure is borderline. I need to start exercising. Mm -hmm. I need to stop eating these meals and all True. of that. By the time True. you start doing that, all right, checking your, you know, your body system at least once every year. Sure. That way you can live a healthier life, live a better life because you are aware of what your health status is saying yeah, at that so. point in time. Yeah, Talking about questions we have from social media platform. Today's question is really very funny. Um, someone that is called the giant one, two, three mm. says, Dr. K, if I want to sell my kidney, I guess one of your kidneys, where do you go to? <laughs> That's a big business. Mabara. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Really, no, I don't know. You know, but you know, there was a point in time when we heard that a lot of people, people were selling yeah. their kidneys and they were using to make money. You yeah. know, the, what's the, you have, don't have money to eat. What's the essence of carrying two kidneys? What you can you yeah. 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 do? Giant, one, two, three. Am I him? No more. That's where you can count it for them. Okay. Okay. Should we start? Am I him? That's Ibo. No more. In your bar. Basaniba. How so? Maba Araf. That's Arabic, I guess. Arabic. And it's vice niche. I don't know. I don't know. If you don't know, they can contact me. All this In is all hard. languages. No, let's let's, let's it, it's clear. It's illegal to yeah. want to sell your kidneys. Yes. Understand this clearly. Your kidneys are important. True. There's a procedure for kidney donation when mm -hmm. someone needs a kidney donation. Mm -hmm. But you have to go through that long procedure yeah. because um, imagine this. You go ahead and for want of money, sell off your kidney. Exactly. And, and then... Weeks body down the line, the other kidney has mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. That's why there are two in the body. Right. Your body makes use of one ahead of it's the other. It's not even everybody that can donate kidney. And that, that's what I've been drinking a call for years. You don't have to come and say, what's what the And then you want to leave no, a kidney. That aside, the giant one, two, three. Uncle yeah. Giants, it don't is, just say the giant. It is illegal. Right. So my answer don't to your it. question is, I don't know. It's not a lucrative business. Okay, so that has been our show for today. We've been talking about kidney failure. I want to say a big thank you to Kidney Solutions, Dr. Ogo Ebuna, for uh, coming in. We went down to the center for joining us to talk about today's yeah. topic. Yeah. If you have more questions, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at We the Doctors. And we should more... also thank the person who was, you know, free enough to give exactly. us this Exactly. Yeah. Thank the patients that, that shared. Step, yeah. That was very, very insightful. And I'm yeah. sure you must have gained a lot from that uh, message. Like we said, if you have questions, you want to tell us what we you would like us to discuss, you want to follow us on Twitter, is at we the doctors. For myself, Dr. Jules. Myself, Dr. Dr. Valeria. Dr. Yvonne. And Dr. OK. We are saying bye-bye and stay, stay healthy. healthy. So, did you like what you just saw? I know you did. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. If you want to see more, just subscribe to our channel right now.